Welcome back to California CEO. I'm Jeff Allen. One of the busiest organizations dedicated to business attraction, retention, and expansion in the Golden State is the California Association for Local Economic Development, or CalEd for short. Recently, CalEd held its 35th annual training conference at the Riverside Convention Center. The event brought together local and regional officials, business leaders, and community influencers for three days of sessions and workshops designed to help cities and counties statewide supercharge their economic development strategies. I spoke with Calage President and CEO Gerbach Sahota, who agrees that the time to tell others why California is the best place to do business is now. California has such an important story that we want to tell, and it seems that other states, other magazines, other organizations come in and tell that story for us when it comes to business climate and how we work with our businesses. But the reality is California is a great state to be in if you're a business. There's this huge group of folks that want to work with you to help you thrive, and this is a great place for them to, to re-energize and remember all the positive things about the state, and then come together, and that way when they go home, they have these great ideas, the great energy, and they can continue to do the great work that they do. So let's talk about it, Gerbax. Let's say that you're um, a, a business owner, you're looking at coming in, and you've just met from some with someone from CalEd. What are some of the things that you learned about why this is such a great place to do business? Well, so when a business comes to us, usually it's someone that's already in California. It's not someone that's looking to move here. Someone that, and this is normal, has a great idea. They're looking for where do we go for funding? Where do we go to figure out where we should locate? What's going on in the state? or their incentives. And what we do is, if they're looking statewide, we'll move them to the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, and those folks will work with them to help them find the resources and identify a location that makes sense. Now, if they already know where they want to be, we have this great membership that we can reach out to and say, let's say they want to be in San Jose. We can say, look, here are the resources we know in San Jose go make the connection and it varies region by region it varies city by city by city economic development really is local so the best thing that we can do is get that business as close to the community they want to locate in and see what that community can do to help them calad is important to cities communities and county governments yes. why we're important because we really are the voice of economic development at the state level. We're also the largest association, professional association for economic developers. So there's nowhere else in the state where you can go and find this breadth of knowledge, 35 years of leadership in economic development. I mean, we've seen the profession grow to where we didn't have 25 members to fill a board, to where we have over 800 practitioners that are working on economic development issues every day. So there's nowhere else in the state that you can go for that kind of camaraderie, knowledge base, and support. Looking ahead, what's next for CalEd? I mean, we've, we're in the middle of this conference today and there's a lot going on, of course, tomorrow. The third day is a three-day event. What's ahead for your organization? So that's my favorite part. It's so exciting right now because we have the opportunity to, to define how we want to lead moving forward. So we have traditional services that we offer our members, like any association would when it comes to education, training like this conference, and advocacy. But there's more. Economic development is still a growing profession. It's still one of those professions where people don't necessarily recognize you need a specific skill set to be an economic developer. So our role is to help define what that skill set is, to create a certificate program for that, and then to go out and remind everybody, look, this is a, economic development has a broad definition, but it's unique by community. What your community wants and needs for economic development may not be what the next community wants and needs for economic development. So how do we find a set of measures that works for all communities where they can say, yes, we are effectively um, doing economic development, and here's why. So to the extent that we as a leader can help define some of those metrics, define that skill set, and make this profession really um, stand out, that's what we want to do. And it's a great time to do it right now. One of the regions that have seen the biggest improvement in California following the recession is San Bernardino County, which had been among the hardest hit areas in terms of unemployment in the nation. Larry Voppel, administrator at the Economic Development Agency of San Bernardino County, gave us a progress update. We really made a comeback. I guess in, my, in, in this last article that I was quoted as saying, you know, we're really hitting our stride, and we, and we are. Over the last three years, the region has, has added 50,000 uh, jobs each of those three years. That's never been done. That's unprecedented. So I think with our, our now in San Bernardino County, our unemployment rate is actually less than the state average, which 
from double digits down to less than state average is amazing. It's really phenomenal, and you're formerly with the city of Riverside, so you've been in the area for a long time. What kinds of attributes, in your, um, your own words, Larry, does the Inland Southern California area offer those companies that are looking at expanding and growing their businesses? So we're seeing growth, obviously, in the logistics field with the ports and the proximity to the ports and just, you know, the impact that trade imports and exports has on the economy. We're capitalizing on that. But we're also seeing a big increase in healthcare administration and, and medical related uh, services because of the area has grown so much pre-recession. And then during the recession, we really didn't get a chance to catch up because of the um, the economic issues that we had. So now we're seeing more investment from hospitals, uh, from, you know, now we got a medical school at UCR. So we're really starting to see a lot of momentum in the, in the, in the realm of healthcare, medical, and of course those are good paying jobs. What about the county of Rivers, uh, or the county of San Bernardino now, and that's where you're doing most of your work, obviously, um, with respect to the opportunities that exist there now? It's pretty much open to business, all industries, or is there kind of a sector or sectors right now the county is especially focused on looking at bringing businesses into the area where the opportunities are, are really pretty outstanding? Well, we do have some targeted industries, and we and we come up with those based upon what is you know we do the SWOT analysis. What are our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, our threats, and really what what is the best mesh for us? And you know we find we are a low cost, um, I guess, option for uh, manufacturing. Especially, we're seeing a lot of LA County, Orange County manufacturers who are growing, mm -hmm. and they don't want to leave California. And, but, and, and so we are a low-cost alternative to them. Uh, they can still stay in California. In fact, a lot of their workforce probably live in San Bernardino County or Riverside County and making that commute every day. So we're seeing a lot of growth um, in, that, in that area as well, manufacturing. Another area that is enjoying a resurgence is Imperial Valley. Timothy Kelly, president of the Imperial Valley Economic Development Corporation, says growth in his region is wide-ranging and diverse. Number one, if you look at it from the outside, you're going to hear some news about high poverty, unemployment. Uh, California is in a drought. The reality is, is that uh, we have had over $4 billion of investment over the last four years. A lot of that's been in renewable energy in agribusiness and international trade and logistics. Our ag economy is the highest it's ever been. Uh, international trade is expanding quite a bit. And uh, for the next uh, 10 to 15 years, renewable energy will continue. And that includes solar, um, biomass, biofuels, uh, geothermal, and wind. I think it's un un unbelievable some of the statistics that you throw out there. A lot of people sometimes they think of Imperial County and think, well, it's 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 kind of the 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 stepsister to, to San Diego County. But there's so much happening there, and what was once formerly kind of just an agricultural capital, really, for the state or sub capital, it seems that the county has really gone off and has done some amazing things. Are there some key industry sectors that right now Imperial County is looking at bringing in? Well, we are, and I first want to start off by talking about our partnership with San Diego and California as a whole. If you look at the entire state, uh, California's uniqueness is we're probably the most diverse region in the world, in the globe, and uh, that's for many reasons. But uh, when you just look at geography alone from east to west, um, San Diego and Imperial County are both on the border of Baja, California. And so therefore, we have looked at the initiative, the Cali Baja Binational Mega Region, as a way to attract investment into the region because of our uniqueness of being a binational, bicultural um, area. And uh, it's really worked out well in, in companies um, that are across the globe that are looking to, uh, are looking for places where they can actually operate in two, two geographic regions at the same time. And we offer that all in one place. And so I think that that's uh, the unique thing about us. But yeah, you did mention agriculture, but uh, the assets that we have in our region, uh, Imperial Valley started as an agriculture area, as most areas did. And it's only been until recently that we've been able to diversify into food processing, international trade, because a lot of the crops we grow are going uh, globally, especially to Asia and to the Middle East. And uh, then we're bringing in manufacturing and be able to tap into some of the industry clusters that are occurring around us. Uh, in the Los Angeles base in San Diego and in Baja California, such as aerospace and, and um, um, advanced manufacturing. Uh, and again, you touched on international trade being so important. Do you see that as kind of the, um, a, a major uh, a 
uh, development in terms of kind of the new way of doing business or the new way of thinking of doing business in California if you're a business in this state that international trade provides you with really just an incremental opportunity for exponential growth in terms of, in, in terms of the economy, in terms of, of operating your business. I think that uh, because we're on the Pacific Rim, our focus has been on Asia. Uh, 1970s, a lot with Japan and then Korea and then China, uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines. But uh, recently we've tapped into markets into the Middle East and are actually exporting a lot of crops into the Middle East. But um, what we've been seeing lately is there's companies I'm working, I'm working with from Australia, uh, from uh, Europe. And if you look at the geographic location for Europe, it's very easy for them to look at the East Coast because of the proximity uh, to Europe. And, um, but companies in Europe want to look at how they can look, move into different markets throughout the United States. So I've been in Europe over the last couple of years telling people, it's fine, go to, go to the East Coast. You eventually want to be in the West Coast. And that's what we've seen a lot of companies moving in that direction. With some of the busiest seaports in the nation, imports and exports are one of the largest contributors to California's economy. Brian Peck, Deputy Director of International Affairs and Business Development for the Governor's Office, stopped by at the conference to give us his assessment of the current foreign trade climate. Well, things are going well. Um, as we pointed out in the conference, I mean, the economy is growing, the GDP is growing, um, exports is growing, a record number amount of exports last year, $174 billion in goods alone, which represents about 7.5% of the total GDP of the state. Um, we're seeing an increase in, in foreign direct investment, which creates a tremendous amount of jobs. So everything is up in the upswing. We're very pleased with that, but we need to do more. Why are international jobs and bringing international companies into California, why is that so important? And really from the perspective of, of job opportunities for people, why are, they so, why are these opportunities so great and why is it there's something that, that need to be embraced? Well, on the export side, uh, as again mentioned in the conference, over 95% of the consumers in the world and over 80% of the purchasing power in the world is outside the United States. And so you really need to, to survive in today's economy. You just can't focus on the local market. You really need to export to expand. By doing that, that creates jobs that are longer lasting uh, than you know, domestic jobs. They're higher paying. So these type of jobs that are created by export-driven you know, manufacturing and other types of service providers generate you know, high-level jobs that are important for the state. On the investment side, you know, again, you know, there's a tremendous amount of foreign direct investment that looks to, to invest in the United States. Those create jobs as well, again, higher paying jobs than average. Um, so these are all tremendous sources for job creation, higher quality of life, uh, living standards for California workers. Brian, there are probably a number of established businesses right now that might be viewing this interview and this discussion. They weren't here to, to hear your, your talk today, but they're uh, probably looking at the possibility of expanding their businesses and maybe exporting. What is it that they need to know about funding and about money that might be available to them to kind of explore this opportunity a little bit more deeply? Sure. Well, our office, one of the things that we do is help facilitate and provide that type of information. There's the federal programs, there's the Export-Import Bank, which provides uh, export financing. Um, the California iBank is looking into developing a program that would be transaction-specific uh, transaction specific export financing as well. Uh, the Congress has just reauthorized a uh, funding program that provides grants to small and medium-sized businesses to participate in trade missions or promote their goods in overseas markets. So there are some funding opportunities available, and our, state, our office can help provide information for those types of programs. So with the state having recovered for the most part from one of the deepest recessions in history, the big challenge now is to keep the economy growing and businesses flourishing, according to business consultant Robert Burris from Burris Service Group. Right now it's all about momentum. You know, we, we have a growing state again after a very tough recession. You know, I bring with my firm 20 years of experience in economic development, that's regional economic development, as well as working with the state of California. This is a large state, and there are a lot of organizations, a lot of people doing great work in creating jobs. It's really important to get them together so we all get on the same page uh, and represent the state well to those interests, those companies, those investors outside of California nationally and internationally. When you have a small business owner come to you and say, you know, Bob, I need your help, what are these people really coming to you? What are the big questions that they have, particularly now, after the recession and as the economy is really starting to gain that traction, that momentum you talked about? Sure. Well, a lot of it's funding to start up capital to get the business started. Uh, a lot of it is just technically setting up a company. How do you provide the support, the network, that make sure that they cover all the bases as they're starting up their company and they have all of the systems in place to do that in a 
legal, systematic, and efficient way. And, and that's where a lot of organizations uh, and agencies like the small business development centers throughout the state, that's where they can come into use. Uh, for a company that maybe it's a small business, one to five million dollars in sales yeah. annually, and they're looking at expanding their business in California. And there are you know, a lot of stigmas associated with relocating or expanding business here yeah. in this state. Yeah. What would you have to tell them? A first piece of advice, you had some free advice to give. Someone came in, they had one question to ask, or you had one piece of advice to give. What would that be? Yeah, well, I'd say stay. <laughs> stay and grow here. Because this is the largest, wealthiest, and most active economy in the United States. And it's really ranked as a, as a country. You know, as we heard today, eighth largest uh, GDP in the United States. And California is uh, a big part of that throughout the state. There's tremendous opportunities for business. Uh, there might be some hardship, just as there is with starting up a business anywhere in the United States. But once you get up and rolling and start to hire those first employees and you bring in that first set of revenues, uh, it's a very exciting thing. And it's an exciting place to be. And I'm one of those small businesses. So I know exactly what they're going through. Finally, we caught up with CalEd Chair Bruce Stensley, who is also president of the Economic Development Collaborative in Ventura County, who talked to us about the role of collaboration in today's economic growth efforts. When we say collaboration, we mean that in a variety of ways. We mean it public-private partnership, we mean it industry to industry, we mean it workforce to education, to economic development across all sectors. You know, we use the word collaborative and collaboration often uh, on California CEO, and I think it's because things have changed, uh, haven't they? I mean, there's, there's kind of a new normal, a new way of doing business if you want to do it effectively. I mean, is that kind of the way that you see it? Absolutely. The notion, I think, is you lead best by leveraging multiple resources, finding ways to be complementary and accentuate the strengths and assets of different sectors, different aspects of the economy and of leadership. Doing it on your own and thinking that you can influence by strength by yourself just doesn't work. It is the new normal. Bruce, tell me how things are going in your home county, Ventura County, and working with the collaborative there. What kinds of things have you been able to accomplish, and what is really your, your thrust right now? What are, you, what are you really targeting and trying to work on? Our primary work in Ventura County is retaining and growing the existing business base we have, and those strengths are in the manufacturing sector, businesses connected to the global economy, businesses in the ag sector, which is a huge leadership piece for us, and it's networking the resources there, and a few other things that are a little more unusual. Not unusual would be the tourism hospitality sector, which is growing for us, being near Los Angeles, and also the film industry. A lot of that is coming back to California. We're right on the edge of the Los Angeles basin and finding ways to be film friendly and making sure that California is getting its fair share of that investment is one of our biggest priorities. When you started this this kind of this movement or this initiative to work collaboratively with between amongst businesses and amongst uh, other key stakeholders how difficult was it for you to kind of get started and and kind of process this new way of thinking and actually start working effectively before the wheels really started turning the fundamental piece of our tactics or strategy was to do what this conference here at Calet is about today that is find common ground in speaking from both public and private sectors and different industries about what are the strengths of California, how we've got the number one manufacturing sector, how we are globally connected, how we produce more food in California than any other place. And we've got people who are excited about the strengths and the assets and the opportunities that are already there in front of you. It made it a lot easier for people to think less. This is not so much about crisis management, but it's about marshalling the assets and resources that we have. And that's much more of a team and collaborative sort of space that encourages people to engage. So uh, if, if someone were to drop their cell phone or they were to drop their notes, lose everything, and they ended up driving away from here today, what is the one thing you would assure them that they need to just take away from today's or this, this week's event, the conference? Uh, California is open for business. Business is strong and active. There are resources at the state level, at the regional level, and the local level. They're easy to find. You can contact any of us through CalEd, through the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. Get linked up to those resources. Find ways to work together in California. Make sure that we are promoting the truth about California and about the strengths that we have in the business sector. For more information on the California Association for Local Economic Development, to follow everything they're doing and to become a member, click on over to caled.org. And for more stories on the California economy and California business news, come back often to californiaceo.net. 
I'm Jeff Allen.